for people who think you just hate small wrestlers because you'll say it in a derisive fashion and also you hate Gargano, but you know, here you are talking about the strengths of Mike Pappas. You talk about Bill Dundee, who was no more than four foot six, let's be honest. Oh, come on! I'm going to say Dundee's either 5'6 or 5'7, and he may have been, like everybody, he was an inch taller when he was younger, but he was also, for most of the time that he was wrestling, between 210 and 225 pounds with that big chest, he could bench press his ass off, and he came across, and also because of the way he worked, he came across as punching above his weight, as they say in boxing. And believe me, if Dundee hit you with a working punch, he was punching above his fucking weight. Well, my question was going to be, yeah, the people who think that you hate small wrestlers or smaller wrestlers, wrestlers under five foot eight, what do they get wrong? They get, it's not, there's no rule of thumb. If, if Jim Londos was five foot eight. And he was the biggest box office attraction in the history of wrestling, but he had the big chest. Also, 100 years ago, people were a little shorter. You didn't see a lot of fucking seven-foot people walking around 100 years ago, but it's the package. It's the appearance. It's the height and the weight and the way it's put together. If you've got a... If Bulldog Brower, what was he, five foot nine, five ten, But he was 270 pounds with that fucking huge chest. If if you've got shorter guys but they're bigger, or you got bigger guys but they're shorter, or you or you have a guy who's, I mean Conor McGregor, is not either tall or heavy, but he has a look, and he's a dynamite kid. Before he got on steroids to go to the WWF, he was yeah sure five ten, but he was 185 190 pounds, but he looked like he was goddamn ripped and built in a laboratory. It's not, it, it, there's so many now small guys that look young because they are young. They either can't figure out, grow a beard, get something to make you older. I don't drink, do drugs, age yourself. I don't fucking know. But everybody that wants to get into the wrestling business looks like a small child, both in terms of size, in terms of face, in terms of voice. I mean, you know, and yes, they can kick the shit out of some people. But that that's not what this is about. It's not about can this five foot seven 175 pound guy that's trained in judo or mixed martial arts kicked the shit out of the guy working at the Exxon station. It's whether or not on television, this guy looks like he can kick the shit out of Roman Reigns or Brock Lesnar or fucking John Cena or goddamn in AEW. Did they have any tough looking motherfuckers? Well, you know what I'm saying? That's the problem is that everybody looks now because there is there's a it's harder to get into the money in MMA but there's more money in MMA now and it looks like all the fucking guys that look like men and look like badasses whether it be the Jim Duggins or the Dr. Des or the Road Warriors or whatever the fuck either don't exist anymore or want to be UFC fighters and not pro wrestlers because pro wrestlers end up, especially at AEW because of the EVPs and because of their taste in other men, a bunch of fucking kids that grew up in the backyard training themselves on their trampolines. And that does not convince the average American citizen or the average global citizen that this guy's a star and an ass kicker and a badass, and a fucking wrestling champion. So again, it's not just about the size, it's about the whole package. But we can't be ridiculous and have a roster full of guys that are 220, 230, 240, 250, and then here comes a 160-pound guy with a fucking page boy haircut like Pip Sabian and he's going to be competitive. Give me if Darby Allen's got a weird charisma. You know what? So there Darby Allen, maybe he's the Mike Pappas of today. 
because his shit at least looks good, even though he's a mental case. His shit looks good, and he looks like he's trying, and he's taking it seriously. So maybe he's the Mike Pappas today. He's the guy. If you're going to have one, have one that has charisma, that people want to see as a personality, and that shit looks good. And then don't have any others, because then they'll just detract from that guy. It's like every really skinny wrestler isn't the same. There's a difference between a Sean Waltman and a Kendall Windham. Boom goes the dynamite. There you go. And now somebody out there will not be able to figure out who we were complimenting, but hopefully the smart ones will get it. Yes, it was Sean. Yes, absolutely. But think about how many wrestlers, you know, you say it's about the whole package. There are other wrestlers who can have that physique and it wouldn't work the same way it did with Sean Waltman. Yeah, well, and there's other wrestlers that can be six foot six and 280 pounds and be built like Luger and they're still the shits, right? And uh, I mean, we, if, if we're looking for a visually intimidating guy, the fucking tattooed face fucker on AEW, well, you wouldn't want to be walking down the street and see him because he looks like a homeless meth addict. Who else tattoos their fucking face? When we find out where the fuck this guy came from, we may very well find out he is a homeless meth addict. But he's got a look, so you'd be scared of him. But as we've seen, he can't fucking work. So it, that's part of the package, too. Size, look, way you carry yourself, demeanor, work, aura. It's all there. 